All right, everybody. Wednesday. It is February 1st. This year is flying by. We're already a month into it. And I am joined by a head hokey, one of the fan favorites, a gentleman and a scholar hailing from Shelby, North Carolina. Dax Hollifield was a four-star project prospect, excuse me, that chose Virginia Tech over Carolina, Stanford, Florida State, South Carolina. And is in his career at Virginia Tech, Dax logged 349 tackles, which is good for fourth all-time. He started in 48 games for the Hokies. He was named a two-time captain, all-time Hokie. He's down in Atlanta. How are you doing, my friend? What's going on, Dax? I'm doing great. I appreciate you for having me on. Uh, down here in Atlanta, working out with Chip Smith. Great place. Um, in great football shape right now. Just trying to do my best to make it the next level. That's really what I'm, my main goal is right now. So. so catch us up a little bit about your training regimen, what you're doing. You're working with Chip Smith. What does a typical day for Dax Hollifield look like right now? Right now, uh, wake up around 8.30, get some breakfast in, get to the facility around 9, 9.30. Uh, get a little warm up. They got, they got some really good, really good recovery room, uh, to put some boots on all the whole works, you know, get prepared for a, a long day around 10 30. We go do some DB work for about an hour and a half with our DB coach. It's been, it's been really good. Just trying to get, uh, qu quicker feet, get in, in and out of your brakes faster. Uh, and then around 12, we we'll sort of go, go more over the, like the specific, uh, drills we're going to be doing at the combine, like the 40, the 5 10 5 the L drill, uh, all those things. And after that, we do about an hour and a half of lift. So it's good about four and a half, three to four and a half hours of work a day. And then after that, you go home and, and just chill out, probably watch some movies, and that's really much it. It's it's, it's pretty good right now. It's, it's, yeah, you know, Atlanta's a fun town. I've uh, learned a lot, uh, seen a lot. It's been a great experience so far. I got to ask you, so the tweet that kind of took – Virginia Tech fans by storm here. So Draft Vogel, who I've never heard of, has a blue check mark, but he puts out a tweet, and this is all it says. Dax Hollifield told me that he can long snap, and he's been working mm -hmm. on refining that ability this offseason. He's also been asked to play fullback. There was no other yeah. context. There was nothing else. And I was telling you before we got uh, to recording, a big reason my father was able to stay in the NFL for a couple extra years was his ability to long snap. So how did that come across your – your desk and how has that journey been? Honestly, long snapping. I, I learned in high school a little bit from my coach. He was a long snapper at App State uh, back in the 90s, and he taught me a little bit. So I always had that in my back pocket. And then this past year, Coach Holt came in, and we started going more pro style. And I'm looking – honestly, I'm thinking to, towards the next level at this point. It's about a year ago. I was like, hey, Coach Holt, how, what can I – how can, can you teach me how to long snap? And he was like, yeah, let's, let's just uh, start practicing a little bit. And so – Got with him. He taught me some some more things. I was getting better at it. And every day during special teams period, Coach Pry, you ain't you're not standing around. You got to be doing something. And so he would, I just go to the side and long step into the net. During if I wasn't, I was only on punt. So if we weren't doing punt, I'd be over there doing that. And I got pretty decent at it. And so fast forward to now, I've just been working on it, working on it. And, you know, just anything to add value to my to my stock. You know what I'm saying? Like it's help me uh, earn a spot on the 53 man. That's really my goal right now. And that's those long snappers. They, they have long careers, man, making the league minimum. That sounds like the life, uh, about 15, 20 years. You can get, you can get that gig. It's, it's a pretty sweet gig. So yeah, that's, that's really what it is. And fullback. Uh, we actually had some, for some plays last year with coach Rudolph. He drew up for me to actually get in. I never got in at fullback, but oh, we never we had got him in the playbook. Him? Oh, we almost did Miami. Man. We almost did Miami. They didn't call. They didn't call my number. So, uh, you know, Coach Prize, the Mike linebacker at Penn State, about five or six years ago, I can't remember his name, but he's actually starting uh, fullback for the Detroit Lions right now. And so, you know, it's just something else I can do. I don't really care what I don't really care what my role is. Whatever, whatever, whatever I can do to help the team, I'll do. So that's really what I want to be. So I want to talk a little bit about 2022, new coach, new scheme, new culture. And for any player that has been around for so long and had a great relationship with the former staff, what was that transition like? And how did your relationship with Coach Marv and Coach Pry evolve over your time this past year? It was really, it went really well. You know, it was tough 
how the old staff how how it ended and stuff like that. People were, people were upset, people were hurt, but you know, you going into it, a new staff having that mindset, having that attitude, ain't going to do any good for anybody. You know what I'm saying? So that's really my whole thing was was going there with positive mindset, positive attitude every day. Try to learn something from these people. You know, they're they've had a lot of success in other places, and you really go in with a with an open mind and try to try to get better. You know, I was trying to do everything I could to have a a great final season as a as as a linebacker, and so I, I felt like I did that. Um, but having Coach Marv, he really he's he's one of the most one of the most special people in my life. Uh, he he really honestly football aside, he just he makes you into a man. He he he. He is the same each and every day. He's just an outstanding role model, and I've learned so much from him. I love him to death. And uh, Coach Pry, very easy to talk to. Uh, me and him have a really good relationship. I, I just walked in his office every day, just had just chatted, you know, and it was, he's very open, and you really need that open board policy and to have a good program, in my opinion. To double down on that, um, one of the cooler moments last year, I thought, was when Coach Mar- when you found out after the game that Coach Marv had taken over the play calling responsibilities against mm-hmm. Liberty. Can you tell us a little bit about what that was like? To did you guys know going into the game that he was calling the plays? No, I didn't. But I say this: I, this he was like, I guess he's my third team's coordinator. Well, mm-hmm. actually, fourth. But Coach Pry was the uh, play caller. So mm-hmm. you can always tell who's – you can sort of tell who's calling things up. Like, they like mm-hmm. certain things, and they just – certain down and distance, they like to call certain coverages and, and blitzes. And so, like, I know Coach Pryor likes to run a lot of zone pressure twos, and we didn't run any Liberty game. We were running a bunch of zone pressure threes, and I was like, oh, this, this is a little weird. Coach, Mar- <laughs> Coach uh, Pry don't usually do this. And then I find it out after the game, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. It makes total sense. So – yeah, but he did a great job. You know, I, I knew obviously it was Coach Pry's defense for the first year, but it was honestly it was it was time for him to let Marv honestly take over and and do that. And Marv did a great job stepping up and calling a great game against Liberty. So, um, yeah, I'm very high on both those guys. So we got four quarters of it in the Liberty game. What can Virginia Tech fans expect from a Coach Marv defense? Or if you're speaking to somebody who's considering coming to Virginia Tech to be a linebacker or be part of that defense, what what is Coach Marv like to have as a defensive coordinator and be as a guy in that unit? He likes, man, he likes to, to send people, man. He likes to blitz people a lot. He wants people to be in the backfield constantly. That's really was his big thing for me this year is play on the other side of the line of scrimmage, get into the backfield, make plays. And honestly, I showed up all over the film this year for all all of all the linebackers. Um, not getting blocked, getting skinny, playing on the edges. That's his big thing as a linebacker. And um, he's being consistent. Uh, he teaches you that, and just being the same guy on a down to down basis, on a day to day basis. Just be that guy all the time, and and in life, and it'll translate into, fo- in, into football. And so that's really who you're going to get with him. From a from a play calling guy, he's going to be down in your face, uh, man. Uh, but he's also going to switch it up. He's going to throw some curveballs at you, and that's really what he's good at. He's good at knowing the times to switch things up, and the net, and and also just putting his guys in good positions to make plays and stuff like that. He's never going to put people in bad spots to to just you know not make a play and stuff like that. So yeah, that's that's really him. One of the things that I said all season long, and look, I know you're a competitor. At the end of the day, you want to win every football game that you play in. Um, but what I always admired about last year's team was no matter how talented the other team was, how far the score margin would have been, there were multiple games and multiple instances in games where you easily could have mailed it in, multiple spots in the season where you all were able, could have mailed it in. What kept this team together and this team fighting from game one all the way up until Liberty? Um I thought it spoke volumes about the leadership of this team and the culture that is being built in Blacksburg. Yeah, you know, we weren't, we weren't, honestly, all the outcomes, most of the outcomes we didn't like. Um, but I ain't never going to quit. And like Shamari Connor, I see Peoples, uh, Narelle Pollard, the guys that really were the foundation for this, this new staff coming in and, and on the defense side of the ball. Uh, we weren't going to have it, man. Like, I, 
I came here to to win games and have success in Blacksburg, and we weren't getting that. But the only way to achieve that is just putting your head down and, and grinding and going to work the next day, no matter the outcome. And that's really the way we've been about it all season. You know, we weren't – we didn't really like the outcome. Nobody did. But you have two choices, quit or keep on going. And I'm so proud of the way – what decision we chose and that was to keep on going each and every day you know it's uh it really shows who you are as a person when when you face adversity and over and over again and and, and you keep choosing the same you, the same uh decision just keep on going and that's that's who that's who we were that's who the other leaders were that's who and me and the older guys really we really bonded this year you know uh the guys have been there for five six years Taiwan, Jalen Holston, uh, Jalen Griffith, all those guys, like, those are my boys, man. If they ever need anything from me, I'm I'm open. They can call me anytime, and I'll do anything. I'll do all I can to help them. They just we, – we went through a lot, and, um, yeah, very special people to me. What's the biggest lesson that you learned this past year? Um – Honestly, like I said before, consistency, man. Like, that's my big word as of, honestly, since Co- Coach Marr came into the building. I truly believe the best players are the best each and every day. Uh, they do the little things right over and over again. And that's all it takes. I mean, people are going to go out there and make big plays. But if you do the right thing over and over again, you're going to shine, you know. And um, you don't have to be most talented. You don't have to be – uh, yeah, like most talent, you used to, all you got to do is do your job over and over again, and you're going to show out. And that's really my big worry. Is just, and you can apply that to life, doing the right thing over and over again, being a good dad, treating your kids right, treating your wife right, just doing the little things over and over again. You're going to be a good person and have a good life. And that's really – Coach Marv really instilled that into, into us and our defense, and that really translates – resonates in me. So one more question about kind of the staff. Knowing you – you're a gym rat. You live in the gym. I want to know a little bit about Coach Galt, a little bit about yeah. his techniques, his program, what kind of relationship you had with him. Tell us a little bit about the strength and conditioning program. And Coach Ferg, who, for, for those of you yeah. who are new, Coach Ferg was here, took a little hiatus, worked with baseball, and now he's back. I'm really excited to see him back. But talk to me about your relationship with the new strength staff. No, oh, they're awesome, Pete. They're awesome guys, man. I was in there every day. I treated this the last season like a nine-to-five. I get there every morning and wouldn't leave until all the coaches left. And that's just how I treated it. But you get close with the people in the building, really close. And so I was in there all the time uh, with Coach with Coach Galt, like just chatting it with him. I was actually – we had an internship. I had an internship as my last class at Virginia Tech, and I did it with him in the weight room. And so his, uh, his main methods are volume, man, get strong, hypertrophy. Just, we're going to get under that bar and – we're going to do it. We're going to, we're going to squat it like 10 times. See how – just put it on your back and see how long you can go, I would say. Uh, and it really trans, translates to football, you know what I'm saying? Like football isn't a one-rep match. you got to do it over and over again so many times, a ton of reps, until your legs are, are dead. But you, at, the, at that point, you still got to push through, you know. And so that's really what's his main thing. And uh, I really liked it. It really taught you how to push through uh, just the hurt and all the – and when the doubt that creeps in your mind, was like, man, can I do this one more rep? Yes. Yes, you can. You just got to force your mind and not think that way. And that's really what he's about. And uh, same goal with Coach Ferg, man. When you, when you, with Coach Ferg, you always got somebody to talk to. He's a great dude. Um, he's, a, he's an all-time Hokie, obviously. And just try – me and him have so many conversations about, like, how it was in the past and how things were when just seeing through the – the golden years of Virginia Tech football, having having those conversations and having somebody that saw, saw it all and trying to get that back, it was it was crucial and and how I impl- how I implemented my leadership day in day out, just trying to get it back, trying to set the standard to what it was each and every day. And his uh, mentorship was crucial in that. So both great dudes, love those guys to death. So obviously, for fans, family and yourself not being able to have your moment in lane stadium on senior day while completely understandable with the tragic circumstances that happened in Charlottesville. It's a, it's a damn shame that you weren't able to have that moment. 
Um, first, can you walk me through that week of not knowing, then finding out you weren't going to have it? Um, and then I want to give you an opportunity to kind of give a message to Hokie Nation, your coaches, teammates, and family as you look back at your career and the memories that you all shared together. Um, it was tough. I'm not going to lie. You know, it had been a tough season. But, and we had gotten so far. And, uh, you know, there had, always, there, there had been those rumors that we were going to play for like the weekend, week before. And so uh, being told that we were going to play – and then looking at the schedule and it being like 13 days away and having the, – the season has already been so long. It was just like, okay, we're going to do this one more time. And I could only imagine what they were going through as, as a team, you know, going through the same thing. And I, I completely understand uh, their decision and have no hard feelings with that. But it was, it was definitely upsetting for me. I really wish I could have gotten my last, my last dance in Lane Stadium. Uh, but, you know, we had a great, great senior night, great banquet that Coach Pry and all of them had for us. And that really meant a lot to me. And it really meant – it meant a lot to all the other seniors, you know, that we felt like we were, were cherished by that staff and they would do anything for us. And so, uh, as a Hokie, uh, it's, been a, it's been a hell of a ride. You know, we've been through a lot, my class especially. Uh, a lot of ups and downs. Um, got to meet a lot of great people. Uh, but I will want to say one thing, like Hokie Nation is different. I go, I mean, I'm meeting a lot of new guys a lot from around the country and just like hearing their stories of how it went, how their fan base was, the people that you meet, it's it's just unlike any, any place else in the country. I mean, Hokie Nation is real. Um, just, I know one day when I'm done with football, like I'm going to be able to do whatever I want because Hokie Nation got my back and, I love how the tunnel says for those of the past and for those to come. And that, that speaks so, so much truth. And um, I truly believe that's what makes Virginia Tech special. It's just the bond that the alumni have and just the, and the current students that, like I said, it's unlike any other place. And I, I'm really appreciative of that. And it's been an honor to play in Lane Stadium in front of 67,000 over my past five years. And uh, I hope I did it right. I hope I, I hope I made them proud. Hope I made everybody proud, and uh, if I could do it all over again, I'd choose it. I, I, I love that place; it's home for me. I, I'm like, I, like you know, got me a little house in Blacksburg, and uh, people will definitely be seeing me tailgating in Blacksburg in the near future, uh, supporting my brother and all the future Hokies. So, really appreciate it. I did not know that you own real estate. You own real estate in Blacksburg. Me and my family do. Yes. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so we're gonna be seeing yeah. we're gonna be seeing you plenty all this. Uh, all the time. All oh, the, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully on bye weeks this fall. But uh, a lifetime guy, we're gonna get you no, on no. here. Hopefully on um, bye weeks. I'll be. Hey, if yeah. You need an Airbnb? Hit me up. It's right. It's right <laughs> off Main Street. Right off South Main Street. It's like a ten minute walk to the stadium. It's it's a nice little uh, weekend spot for the uh, for game weekends and even graduation stuff. So. That's a and also as you, as you mentioned last time. You know, during the summertime, throw on your underwear, get on the uh, get on the lawnmower, do some lawn mowing oh, in the uh, front man. backyard. Push, uh, push mower mentality, man. That's the way I was push raised. Uh-huh. Okay, that's I'm okay. gonna get a shirt with that made on it. That's uh, that's the little the young boys like to make fun of me, man, because that's this is how me and my brother were raised. We never had the the electric mowers. We had the or the the riding lawnmowers. We all, my dad always had us doing the push mower in the backyard up the hills and it, it may, it'll make a man out of you, you know, cutting a couple acres uh, by ourselves with some kids. And that's what it is. Push mower mentality, man. Dax, I got to tell you, I did, I did just write that down. Um, I know, I know NIL is no longer a thing, but we'll, we'll, we'll get you some, uh, we're, we're going to get working on some push mower mentality t-shirts. Um, yes, sir. We'll, we'll, we'll make that happen. Um, before we take a, uh, before we take a quick break, looking forward, so for those to come, Tech fans are curious what to expect in year two uh, with Coach Pry after this season. What is your outlook on the future of the program based upon the people still there, the culture that's being instilled, what you saw in your year? What should Hokie fans expect moving forward with this staff and with this program as it continues to build? I think it's going to take time. I'm not saying that – I mean, it's going. I think it's going to be a great season this year. But, you know, we have to, we have to recruit this state. 
uh, state of Virginia. You know, we got to get everybody. The top guys in the state need to come to Virginia Tech, and that's the only way we're going to win consistently. And um, my girlfriend's calling me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but uh, that's the only way we're going to get back to that. But saying that, we got great people in that building, and that's all it takes is having good people in the building doing the right thing over and over again. And that's what that's what this staff is, is good people. And um, I think the, the sky's the limit for the staff and, and uh, Virginia Tech football right now. So I, I expect a, g- a good season, and uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball. But uh, I'm excited to watch. So, Dax, we're going to have a little bit of fun here, okay? We have this new segment. It's called the Pylons. So we're going to do a snake draft. And the subject that I chose today – was to snake draft the grittiest people in history that you can think of. You get the first pick, so go ahead and give us your number one overall pick for uh, grittiest person you can think of. Uh, Jerry Hewitt. Okay. That's, Jerry Hewitt. That's gritty right there, as gritty as, I can, as it can get. You know, he's about, he's about to get married in about a month, so shout mm-hmm. out to him and Rachel, the the Hewitts. Uh, Great people, you know. He's 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 so blue collar. He was a great mentor of mine in my early years here at Tech. Me and him had a really great bond. He's one of my best friends in the world. Uh, he's definitely my number one pick overall. Is the grittiest guy in the world to me. I'm gonna go with my first pick. I'm going John Wayne. Uh, mm. I kept it. I kept it a celebrity or a, or athlete. Um, that was a great hat hat tip. I know you and Jared or Hewitt, uh, mm-hmm. you and Hewitt are thieves, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with John Wayne. I mean, he starred in a movie called Grit, so True Grit. I believe yeah. it was him or True Grit. Eastwood. You can do either one of those two. Uh, so yeah. I'll go with John Wayne first pick. Um, obviously Chuck Norris, number two pick. You know, Chuck he's just Norris. a stud. You know, he, he's. Really can't get more grittier than that, than Chuck. You know, so he's my number two pick overall. Just a stud. I'm gonna go with Theodore Roosevelt for my second pick. Theodore Roosevelt. Gritty. Theodore Roosevelt. Mm-hmm. Teddy. I think Walter White. Oh, out. good pick. He's a goat. That's my that's my favorite. He gets it done. Show. He gets it done. Breaking Takes bad. care of his family he, he, by all means necessary. A man. That's he's 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 just a dog, man. He's he he, he he takes care of business and you gotta respect the guy that can do that uh on a consistent basis. And that's what he mm-hmm. does, man. All he does is gets the job done. That's an awesome pick. I'm gonna go with Muhammad Ali as my third pick for grittiest human being. Mmm. Ooh, I like right now. Uh oh, Coach Marv. <laughs> no, that that that's the top pick. How did I forget that? <laughs> Coach Marv. Some grit. Grit. That's grit. You know, Going close to close guy. to the death here with three yeah. uh four teammate and a former coach. Oh, you're throwing me for a loop. I'm going to change my last one, and I'm going to go with uh, – I'll go with Jocko Willink. I think that guy's grit. Jocko's, great yeah, podcast, stud, 100%. great book. Um, so I'll uh, I'll go with Jocko Willink. I think – do you have one more or did you do four? I think I did, yeah. Who the hell? You get a bonus one. Where's... You get a bonus one. Go on. Give me hey, one more. The reason I'm here at Ted, the legend – Yep. But Foster, you already yep. know. That's great a great thing. one to end on. Yes, sir. Um, a couple more. I was going to do these as let's do eight more picks, but let's not. I'm just going to give you random things, and you think of the grittiest thing that you can think of in that category. Animals. Kodiak grizzly. Kodiak grizzly. That's my favorite animal. Pretty sweet. I'll go ahead with a uh, – I'll go with a wolverine. It's a pretty gritty animal. I'm going to go with uh, – Gritty lift. Vomit curls. Oof. Okay. I went, I went or, with dead. what is a refinement curl? I went with uh, dead lift. What is a refinement curl? I think a vomit curl where you take a crazy, you got to you put your arm on a bench, uh, eccentric on the way down, slow, 
really heavy dumbbell. I'm talking about like 60, 70 pounds, one arm. And you pull it back up a little uh, bit. And, like, you a look, and it just keep going. And it, just, it just kills you, man. Uh, yeah. Or farmer's carries, man. Farmer's walks. Those, you can't get more gritty than that. Just honestly working on the farm, carrying a bunch of hay bales. You get into the the – the gym, you do the same thing. That's that's a man's lift right there. Grittiest candy. You're kind of mixing two things here. What is a gritty, gritty candy? Mm. A gritty candy. I don't even know how to – these things – ooh. My grandfather's pretty blue collar, and so – okay. He loves he loves paydays now. And so I was gonna say paydays. I was gonna say paydays. Yeah, you Payday. know the, the 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 peanuts on the outside. That's just mm-hmm. it's an yep. old school Low candy bar right there. Mm-hmm. I like Mallow mm-hmm. cups. Those are good. What you is know that what I'm talking about? They're like the no. Reese's cups, but they got they got uh, marshmallows in the middle. Good stuff. That's not pretty. They always, but that's not. Good. They got them at the sheets. They look. But, they got like but old that's school not packaging. Good. So. Okay. I mean, we're okay. talking about candy bars right now, big dog. That's true. That's true. It, how gritty can it get? Um, yeah, no doubt. We'll wrap uh, – we got rapid fire and then fan questions. So first rapid fire question, what is your proudest moment as a Hokie? Honestly, 2021, the UVA game, you know, uh, that, that, was a bad, that was a hard season, uh, especially the last couple of games. And uh, first half, it was, it was pretty tough. Uh, we had to pull through and like get the job done and win the Commonwealth Cup at, at in in uh, Charlottesville. That was a big that was a big moment. That was probably one of my proudest moments as a Hokey was that game right there. And so yeah, dinner with four people, dead or alive, and you pick the restaurant. Donald Draper, Mad Men. Um, oh, we're talking about fictional characters. You yeah, can do it. Yeah, go like for that. it. Whoever you want. I like that. Donald Draper. Um, who else do I like? Uh, you know, I like Luke Combs. Luke Combs is pretty, pretty, pretty good dude. Um, uh, need me a. I think I think Big Cat would be a be a would be a fun a fun. Uh, John Daly as well. So those four would be okay. pretty cool, cool, uh, cool dinner. Where will we Where have dinner at? Hooters. Hooters. Get some free wings wow. from from Daly. You know, watch some watch some uh, some some ball. <laughs> what is your favorite yeah. Coach Foster story? Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite uh, podcast appropriate Coach Foster story. Um, uh, honestly, I'll tell you one thing. Coach Foster can surf because me and Dylan Rivers one time went out to his uh, little lake house at Clater Lake, and he can surf, man. Like we he, we get back on his uh his surf his uh, wake boat, and that man can can get after it. I forget his buddy's name, but his buddy can do like a bunch of three sixties. That's one of my my favorite memories of, of Coach Falls is me, him, and Dylan were out there on the on the lake and had a great, a good old day surfing. So it's a good story. Had a good time. I'm thinking of pulling guards. I'm thinking of fullbacks hitting the hole. I'm thinking of running backs mm-hmm. and blitz pickup. Who is the hardest hitting opponent? that you had? Is there a hit that stands out? Is there a player at practice who was always pulling a middle drill that you hated going against? Who was the hardest hitter? Well, I mean, there's one play that I just got lit up on kickoff. It was against Georgia Tech 2019. Uh, I think it was their, like, third string running back. He also is a guy that tackled me on the pick that game. Yeah, you know, he just lit me up. I've never been completely, like, just ran through before in my life. But that was the one time that I mean it was it was a uh, that was a uh, that was a pretty bad one. But my boy Daniel Griffith, who he's he's a fun one. Don't let the music fool you. That guy that, brings the boom. Or yeah. Or, or I mean, Coach Foster's individual drill, man, that'll make a man out of you. So a bunch of snot bubbles. 
uh, for the, the guys that get that joke. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, Dan Griffin got a hard head. Uh, Rook got a hard head. Dylan Rivers got a hard head. All of them, Rico got a hard head. It's, hey, ain't nobody can hit like the Virginia Tech linebackers 2018-2019. Uh, I'm telling you that right now. Rico Kearney used Rico. to murder people in practice. Yeah. Like, no, me, he, me and him went against – we were individual par- buddy partners every day. So, I had to deal with him every day. It was the long freshman and sophomore year – well, freshman year, so, in uh, that practice. So, yeah. Stephen Peoples, too, man. Stephen Peoples yeah. struck you, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was like my first practice in fall camp, and we are doing, like, blitz pickup, like – uh, running back, linebacker, one on ones, and dude, I got freaking pancake. It was so bad. I think I got. I think I got put on Twitter. It was embarrassing, man. <laughs> it was bad. Everybody so. gets caught, dude. The quicker you find that out, in in that anything, was my in, everybody that was gets caught. That was mm-hmm. definitely welcome to college football. Um, I want to give you some props, Dax. You are a four-time All ACC Academic Team member. 2018, 2020, 2021, yep. and 2022. And in 2022, yourself and Jack received this honor. Your brother Jack, also all ACC academic team. First of all, congratulations, Smarty Pants. Second of all, who is the bigger bookworm and who would win in a spelling bee between you and Jack? Um, first off, shout out Brad Kraut, academic weapon. Uh, you know, that's what we got to do. But, Jax, I'm probably a better test taker than Jack. I'm a pretty good test taker. That's why I think I'm, I'm all SEC uh, all those years. Jack, Jack's pretty good uh, more writing and, and reading-wise. So, that being said, I think he got me in the spelling bee. You know, he's more okay. of the, the liberal arts kind of guy. I'm more of the STEM yeah. guy, you know. Okay. So I think he's got me in that one. Can you explain to me what that award was you won this year? You won like the STEM military yeah, it, uh, linebacker of the I, year. I I, I mean, think, what, is, um, what was that? That was, I don't know exactly, but it it was like, I think it was a scholar athlete of the year for each team in the ACC or something like that. Um, okay. I think Dean Ferguson won it the year before, but I think it had to be within the STEM major. So science, technology, uh, engineering, or math. So he he's an Dean's an engineering major. I'm obviously a nutrition and exercise science mm-hmm. major, and um, yeah, it's pretty yeah, cool. The military Bowl three M STEM scholar yeah. athlete. I read that and I was like, I know this is impressive. I just I, I don't know what it is. So congratulations! Yeah, it's great to have that. on your resume, man. Yeah, that is true. Uh, Dax Hollifield is played by a movie character. Who is it? Uh, R.I.P. If he. If if it's any time Heath Ledger, man, mm-hmm. RP, that's my guy. But that's him. Well, younger, Dak, not anymore. Younger one, but younger young, one. Younger okay. one. He, I look. Uh, him, I think that's my guy. If Dax Hollifield were a car or a truck, what would he be? I mean, I'm thinking of. Uh, Chevy Silverado 2500 HD, you know. Newer version? 1990s version? I mean, I think 70 with jacked 19- up <laughs> crew cab <laughs> diesel, you know, that'd be that's sweet. So I like, or just the, uh, I think I'm a, a coat truck, you know, or, or Budweiser truck, something like mm-hmm. that. Like the guy who Larry the Cable Guy plays in Cars type yeah. Bob? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, give us three underrated artists in music. Like put some people on to some music right now. Like you mentioned Luke Combs. Who are some like underground country guys that you know of that you want to put some folks on to right now? Mm. Look to my Spotify real quick. Oh, man. I actually have to ask you a question, Dax Hollifield. What is that? I gotta ask you I a like, question. I, I like indie music, man. Like I go through waves. Like right now, I'm not really on a country wave. That's more summertime. I'm okay. more of like an okay. indie guy right now. Uh, 
uh, Men I Trust is a good, really good band that I really like. Uh, definitely indie. Peach Pit is a good one. Uh, I love The Grateful Dead. That's one of my favorite uh, yeah. artists. Uh, I've been big into Mountain Joy. I know you're a huge Mountain Joy fan. Love Let's them. Go. Yeah. Uh, big, big, big into them. Uh, let me get some country, man. Let me get y'all some country. Oh, Marcus King. Well, I got one for Marcus I got one King. For what is that? Morgan Wade. I saw that you. Oh yeah, that Morgan, you Wade, yeah. Morgan Wade. Yeah, no, no. she's fantastic. Yeah, she's from South Carolina. I'm pretty sure. Sh- no, she's not. No, dude, uh, she's from Boyd County. She's like yeah. right from Blacksburg. Yeah, she played. She played in. Um, she played at uh Floyd Fest this past year. I'm pretty sure. Did she? Okay, yeah. So she's she's right from that area. We got to find a way yeah. to get her to play. I think she's followed me on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, I need I, you I to. Thought, yeah, she is. I'm trying to get her to play at at uh, at, uh, at Spring Jam yeah. this year. That's we're we're trying to make yeah. that happen. She she's um, awesome. Uh, what's uh, what's the other woman's name? Hold on, I got you. Uh, I love some Paul Coffin, Cal- man. He, he's he's really good, real mm-hmm. good. Uh. Oh, what's her name? What's her name? I'm so oh, fired up. Name? We got a mountain. Oh, right Ashlyn there. Craft. Ashlyn Craft. Ashlyn Craft. She's good. Familiar as well. She's good. Yeah, that's some good so, stuff. That's that's some good stuff right there. That's but some like good I stuff. said, yeah. country is my, more my summer jams. You know, mm-hmm. uh, during the winter, I just I don't know. I like Spotify because it's got the Discover Weekly. And I get they they put me on a bunch of new artists that I really like. It's all about the the guitar man, that bass too. You got a good guitar and bass. Yeah. You're, you're right, my alley, you know. So yeah, we got to get you. We got to get you this summertime to get to a Dead and Company concert. I saw them in San Diego. Oh, I'll be there. I'll Unbelievable. Be there. I'm gonna be the one at uh, least. Last couple here. Uh, I, I wasn't gonna ask this, but you brought it up. So uh, Jesus drives an Astro van. Uh, would you assume that Jesus drove an Astro van, or do you think Jesus would drive something else? No, nah, I think I think that sounds about right. Load up all the disciples in the back. You know, yep, yeah, that's I think the way they to nailed go. That. Mm-hmm. Best fast food burger, uh, McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger like, King. None of them like, like oh, yeah, Wendy's. You talking about? The, I, I thought you meant like we we're talking including fat, no. like five. Nah, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely, it's definitely Wendy's. Like growing up, okay, every Saturday, right before after playing basketball games, we're going to Wendy's as a whole family. I'm mm-hmm. talking about all 20 of us. Oh, wow. We're all there. So, yeah, big crowd rolling into Wendy's every weekend. That is a big crowd. Staple in the, uh, the Hollowfield household. <laughs> Staple. Are you a Baconator guy? Are you uh, Dave yeah. Double? I'm a Baconator okay. guy. But I'm a, honestly, ba- I'm a Baconator guy, but I'm going to add let- lettuce, tomato, onion, mayo, and ketchup to it. So, I mean, it turns into a, ba- a Dave's Double with bacon, you know? Uh, so last, uh, last segment here, we got some questions from fans. Uh, I love this question from Rich Luttenberger. How is playing under Coach Pry similar and different than playing under Coach Foster? Uh, obviously, just the be- like what what defense we're running, base defense. Like Coach Pry is a, a four three guy. Like he likes having four defensive linemen and then three linebackers. Where Coach Foster was a more of a four two five guy. We played a lot of nickel. Uh, that's what Tremari played early in his career, um, as well as Mook, all those guys. So different different personnel uh, was their main thing. But uh, they both really like the blitz. They're very aggressive uh, play callers, I would say, uh, is the main thing. Uh, that's really, really where they're similar. Uh, Coach Foster, he was – he his he his cover four he called a cover nine. To this day, uh, the way we call things, it it, it's a, it went over my head. But uh, he our quarters was very man like, you know, and he didn't want to give up an inch. Like he didn't want you to have anything, and that's really the way he played defense. Like, you're not going to get a, a yard, a yard. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, Coach Pry is similar, but in today's day, uh, today's Football, you got to give up something, man, or they're gonna yeah. they're gonna hollow you. Uh, you gotta you gotta let them have a you gotta take away the deep route, rally to the 
the short route, and that's just how football has to be played. And so that's uh, Coach Fry. Coach Fry is a little bit different than that, and he he will allow that um, really zoning the underneath off. And uh, Coach Pryor really likes his own pressure too. So you're playing cover two on the back end. Uh, he liked, really liked blitzing the Sam a lot compared to Coach uh, Foster. He loved blitzing the Mike. Rook, Rook blitzed like every play, it seemed like. And so it was uh, – I was looking forward to playing Mike under Coach Foster. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I didn't get to do that. But, uh, yeah, that's sort of some uh, differences and similarities between their playing column. Favorite Virginia Tech uniform you got to wear and favorite U- Virginia Tech uniform of the past that you did not get to wear? Um, I initially liked the throwbacks, but then we got beat twice in them, so I, I didn't like them any, <laughs> anymore. But I love all maroon. That's my probably my favorite yeah. combo, um, especially at night. Uh, mm. Those times we played Notre Dame, I think that was probably the, my favorite, the cleanest combo we ever wore. Um. From the past, the – when they played the – what were they? The black ones where – The Boise not, game. I mean, yeah. The Boise game. That – man, that was, that was pretty – that was pretty tough. Uh, yeah. I like – I, I wish we had a black uni uh, at least, you know. The ones they had at Beamer's final home game, those were pretty – those were pretty sweet as well. Um, they didn't look better I wish they had like a stripe down our pants. I wish we had something down the side of our pants or something like that. Our pants sort of seem too plain right now. That's my only thing. Like, they're just white or maroon, you know? And mm-hmm. I don't know if the old ones did, or at least something. I you need know. some spice. Yeah. I think there needs to be a little something there. I think it just looks a little bit too plain. Because, but what do I know? Last two here. Um, John Cran says, hello, Dax. My dog. From the my dog. The man. Uh, where were you when you found out Coach Foster was retiring, and what was your immediate reaction? Uh, in the meeting room, and he announced it in front of the whole team, and I was <laughs> uh, pretty upset. Uh, you know, it is what. Yeah. Proof. My my face was leaking, no doubt. My eyes mm-hmm. were leaking, so uh, it was a uh, you know that that season. That's probably my favorite season I had. Just under that, just going, let, trying to send him out. We, I mean, we didn't send him out the right way, but the, we had some. We had a really good win streak, and that was that was probably one of the best times in my whole entire career at Virginia Tech. That win streak we were going on, uh, we were playing at a really high level, had a lot of confidence, and uh, wish we could have finished it though. I really do, looking back on it, uh, but we can't really do anything about it now. But that was probably uh, one of the coolest times. They call me Average Joe. That is the name of the person that wrote in. Did Dax enjoy his lightning rod role with UVA fans? Very few Virginia Tech players reach that level of hatred from the Virginia fan base. Yeah, uh, I really enjoyed it. You know, playing a villain in the rivalry, that was always a fun time. Honestly, I, I started staying off of Twitter my back half of, the, of my career. You know, I just wanted to really do my own thing, and I – I was like, man, I'm just wasting my time on Twitter. But uh, the first half, just talking crap, that was fun. You know, get it heated up. The rivalry started. And honestly, the really what it got started was the Bryce Perkins thing. Uh, my freshman year, I told him to get off the field. I didn't know he was hurt. I think I did pre, pre-game, but like in the in like the GIF or the GIF or whatever it is, it looked pretty yeah, bad. Yeah, obviously didn't know he was hurt. Yeah. I didn't know. I was telling him to get off the field. It was like third down. And so I'm pretty sure we just got a sack. And so, you know, it is what it is. I got to tell you, it all. And I just ran with it. You know, it was fun. It was fun. Like, it was a, it was a good time. Like, all those keyboard warriors were were just just trying to kill me. So, it was, it was fun. You know what? Tempers flare, but they die down. But gifts live forever. And that's a no pretty kick-ass gift. So, I'll, I'll give you that. Uh, my last question here is the pink underwear – that you said you wore for every game, is it getting yep. a frame? Is it uh, is it still in use? What yeah. is the uh, what is Upstairs the update? In my closet right now. Oh, yeah. okay, it's in your yeah. closet. I mean, so yeah. you break if it I out. Ever, if I ever have a have a big day, special occasion, I'm popping those on. You know, what maybe get a frame one day? 
What classifies uh, as a special occasion? If I got, if I, if I need to, if I feel like I need some luck that day, or just like, I don't know, it's just a. I feel like if it's an above average day, like you, uh, like it's uh, you only get you only get like thirteen games a year, so something like that, like a very a special occasion. If I got like a uh, talk in front of some people, I put the I'll pull up pop those on big for uh, a game or probably probably pro day I wear those as well. So yeah, Dax, appreciate your time. This has been great. Wishing you nothing but the best in your training and whatever's next for you. Again, gentleman, scholar, all-time Hokie. Appreciate you, man. Best of luck. Love you. And uh, do the damn thing. Best of luck. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for having me on. It's been a blessing, man. Okay. Thank you.